I'm Nathan Gonzalez with Inside Elections. 2012 was a great year for Democrats. President Barack Obama won re-election. Democrats gained eight seats in the House. Democrats even exceeded expectations by gaining two seats in the Senate. But the consequence of having a good year in the Senate is that you have to defend all of those seats six years later. It's early in the 2018 election cycle. Retirements, primaries, and maybe most importantly, President Donald Trump's performance will shape the electoral landscape in these midterm elections. But that doesn't change the fact that the initial map is very favorable for Republicans. Democrats are defending 25 of the 33 seats that are up for re-election this cycle, including the two independents who will caucus with Democrats. Ten of those Democratic incumbents are running for re-election in states that Donald Trump won. And five of those Democratic incumbents are running in states such as West Virginia, Missouri, Montana, Indiana, and North Dakota, where Donald Trump and Mitt Romney won in the two most recent presidential elections. On the other side of the ledger, Republicans are defending just eight seats. And just one of those, Nevada, is a state that Clinton won in the 2016 presidential election. Arizona is really the only other potential takeover opportunity for Democrats. One of the most significant narratives of the cycle is the tension between the opportunity Republicans have to gain Senate seats with the responsibility that they have being in the majority and controlling the White House. As my colleague Stu Rothenberg wrote recently, the President's party has gained Senate seats in just four of the last 17 midterm elections. And in those elections, it's either been one or two seats. And only one time in the last hundred years since we've been directly electing senators has the President's party gained at least eight seats. Eight seats is what Republicans would need in 2018 to get a filibuster-proof 60-seat majority. That only time was way back in 1934. Even though Democrats have history on their side, some of their incumbents are going to have a very challenging two years. Take West Virginia's Joe Manchin, for example. In one year, he's going to be hearing from Democrats, Democrats who want to oppose President Donald Trump at every opportunity. They think Trump is a racist, sexist fraud who didn't win the popular vote. In the other ear, he's going to hear 69% of West Virginia voters who decided to put Donald Trump in the Oval Office. West Virginia and Joe Manchin will be a top Republican takeover in 2018. Finally, midterm elections are often a referendum on the president's performance and his party is ultimately held responsible. But what we learned from 2016 is that moderate voters didn't hold Republican candidates responsible for candidate Trump's sins. So one of the biggest questions coming into this cycle is will voters hold Republican members responsible for President Trump's actions? Republicans are well positioned to gain Senate seats in 2018. But we also learned from 2016 that any election involving Donald Trump can be atypical.